Well, my name is Dale Peterson. My, my first book was The History of Psychiatry, and my second book was An Introduction to Computers. I did a book with the University of California Press on a very serious conservation problem known generally as bush meat. Bush meat is African wild animal meat. So I wrote a book on this subject um, featuring photographs by Carl Mann. After this book was done, uh, Carl sent them some of his elephant photographs, and, and it just really struck a chord with the editorial staff there. I think he had an elephant expert in mind to write the introductory material, and um, it turned out that they really wanted me to do it. So they asked me, and I said, well, you know, I don't know anything about elephants, but I'll do my best. When Carl and I started the book, uh, the first thing we did was to go out to Burma and go into the mountains of northeast Burma, where there, the Burmese still use elephants in logging in the mountains. Carl and I rode elephants uh, for a couple of days into the mountains. One of the things that I realized, elephant infrasonic communication, and one aspect of it is just kind of the rumbling that they do that's sort of at the, the low level of human hearing. You know, while I was riding this elephant, I could feel the rumbling, not just hear it, but I feel it all through my body. It was emanating through the body of the elephant. That was a very intimate uh, experience. I'm kind of used to animals like apes who look at you and who, you can follow their their eyes and you can see expressions on their faces that remind you of human expressions and you get a sense of a, of a very active and very vigorous intelligence with apes. So it's elephants. You still get the sense of this tremendous intelligence, but you can't see it in their faces and you can't see it in their eyes. The best you can do is just to watch this trunk that is constantly moving and constantly assessing and constantly flickering this way and that. You can never take the fact that they're not picking you up and crushing you for granted. Mm -hmm. They could, and they, they do sometimes, and they might. And so you're always there's always that level of tension about this. The book leads us to um, showing an animal that is at once sort of physically magnificent, that is ethically extremely important, and uh, also kind of iconically important uh, as representing uh, wild nature, but also, you know, in, important in the, in the sense of being an intelligent and animal with uh, personality and emotions and and a mind, and I think these are lessons uh, for for everyone who's intelligent and who cares about the world. I would say it's a message of con urgent conservation. The collapse of the elephant population, the cutting in half of the elephant population in the last 40 years. You see, it's not only sad and it's not only disturbing, but it's catastrophic. And I think it's this sense that a scientific perspective gives us. And it's certainly the sense that I want to communicate with the book. You know, one of my readers called it an elegy, and it is that. I mean, you're always, if you write about ele elephants, you really are writing elegies, an animal that is on the brink.